At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have asked not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me, and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke, and he realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court, when two women approached Solomon for his counsel and consolation. Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night this woman's son died because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while lighter servant was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. No. The living one is my son. The dead one is yours. No. The dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. This one says, My son is alive and your son is dead, while that one says, No. Your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the kind said, Bring me a sword. Cut the child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Two. Yes, my lord. That seems righteous cut him in two. Please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. Then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is the mother. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, they held the king in awe, because they said that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore, they ate, they drank, and they were happy. And Solomon over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. These countries brought tribute and were Solomon's subjects all his life. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight, and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than all the people's wisdom of the East, and greater than all of the wisdom in Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else. His fame spread to the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. He spoke about plant life, animals and birds, reptiles and fish. From all the nations people came to listen Solomon's wisdom. The proverbs of Solomon son of David, king of Israel touched bases on ideas such as For gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge.